Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is June 1st. Thanks for joining us this morning, and I hope you had a safe drive into wherever you ended up because it was pretty rainy this morning That's and windy as well. And windy, and we have uh, power outages we're still dealing with. We've been dealing with that off and on all weekend long, and now we are into Tuesday. We'll have more on that coming up. We'll be checking in with Sarah, who's in for Justin. That's right, but for now, let's uh, start your morning talking about your morning routine. There are apparently six morning habits that they have determined may be secretly stressing you out. <laughs> I love this article because these are things that you do, uh, you know, to start your day because you're told they're they're good for they're you. Good that you think they're good for you right. and that you may be undoing everything. Exactly. So at the top at the list, uh, eating a slow breakfast, of course, that's usually a recommendation, but they say, you know, if you're busy, you're trying to get your kids dressed for school, it says that it might be challenging to actually like eat a slow breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, snoozing your alarm on the flip side. Sometimes the way we prolong our sleep is an ideal. Pressing snooze can send you into a state of stress and we've all been there. Yeah, I still do do it, but it says not to mention the fact that you're not getting quality sleep during this time anyway. I've only met one person who does not snooze, and that's Justin Horn. He doesn't snooze? Yeah, he, he doesn't do it. He's, Isn't that weird? <laughs> lying through his teeth. Well, well that's, what, that's what he claims. We can talk about him because he's not here yeah, today. Yeah, we'll hit him up when he comes back. <laughs> uh, journaling, some people like to journal uh, perhaps in the morning. I don't know how you have time to do that in the morning with everything else that's going on, but you know, people are saying take that mm -hmm. into consideration. You may have other things that you need to make a priority. Yes, and on that note, also writing a to-do list. Mm -hmm. I barely do that in my head. I mean, why, my, while it might be beneficial, it, it says here that it could be stressful if you're overly ambitious and have written down more things than you can reasonably do. And also on the list, eating breakfast with your family. Again, it sounds like the pros outweigh the cons. Exactly. Uh, if you don't have the time to do it, you know, if you're forcing it to happen, and it, it might be more stressful to do that. And the last one, I think, here on our list, getting right out of bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so holding this rule too tightly can create pressure on you to bolt out of bed the minute you wake up, and maybe it's okay to lay down and look at your phone or not bolt out of bed. Right. Well, I do because I'm usually like, that's it's already my third alarm, and I need to bolt out of bed <laughs> how after many, I snooze. How many times do you hit snooze on average? Oh, probably two or three. Two yeah. point five? Yeah, on average. On average? Yeah, on average. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I make it before my fifth alarm, right? That's true. Mornings are tough, but uh, are. we're here to make them better and a little bit easier. That's right. Let's look at today's nine at nine. Tulsa, Oklahoma and communities across the country remembering a devastating day in history. In 1921, a white mob attacked what was known as Black Wall Street, killing hundreds of people. Today, President Biden will visit Tulsa to tour the Greenwood Cultural Center and meet with surviving members of the community. Yesterday, he proclaimed a day of remembrance and called on Americans to recommit to helping root out systemic racism in the U.S. Twelve people charged in the January 6th siege at the Capitol have court hearings today. This comes as federal prosecutors indict four more alleged members of that group. American and Southwest Airlines saying they are holding off on plans to bring back alcohol service on flights. This comes after recent incidents involving unruly passengers. Two bills that will bring some financial relief to those with diabetes that use insulin are headed to Governor Greg Abbott's desk if enacted. The bills would lower the cost of prescription insulin starting in September. Today, the Pentagon is expected to release inside information on UFOs. A top national intelligence official says it will include information that cannot easily be explained. Pride Month is officially here. The month of June marks a time of celebration and reflection for the LGBTQ plus community and allies. Pride dates back to 1969 and it began as riots in New York led by black transgender women protesting police brutality. The next time you go to Vegas, expect it to look a lot like 2019. Sin City is opening up for business at full capacity beginning today. Two NBA playoff series that are tied hit the court tonight. The Trailblazers and Nuggets and the Lakers and Suns. And the Brooklyn Nets are just one win away from clinching a series win against the Boston Celtics. And that's today's Night at Nine. 
we've come a long way on the UFO thing. Since the 40s or 50s, the U.S. government's been like, they don't exist. And now they're like, here, here. you guys decide. <laughs> and they're like, by the way, this is hard to explain. Right. Yeah. And if they can't explain it, what does that really mean? <laughs> hmm. Mystery. Mystery. Okay, outside with live cam, uh, a stormy weekend. We're seeing some sun now. Sarah's in for Justin. Yeah, hey guys. Good Hi, morning. good morning. Doing? Good morning. Hi. Yeah, uh, I got to listen to the sounds of thunder last night. I'm sure a lot of you did at home as well. Now, in, here in San Antonio, we really didn't have any severe weather, which was good news. So just some heavy rain at times, and there was some severe weather to the south, but the aquifer is really loving all this rain that we've been getting. It's up three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours now almost seven feet above the monthly average for June. So it looks pretty good on the aquifer level, but unfortunately a lot of rain also means high molds, very high molds in today's pollen count even went up from yesterday. Grass and pigweed are present, but in low amounts. Now I'll show you the radar and the rain has moved off to the east and we're going to see a temporary into the rain right now. However, into the afternoon, a small chance for an isolated shower storm. And then once again in the overnight hours, it looks like we'll have a chance for some rain. Sunshine at the airport right now, 71 degrees, but you can see those clouds moving in. It's going to be a mostly cloudy day still, so soak up the sun as you can out there right now. And it is June 1st. This marks the beginning of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Forecast at 60% chance to be above average season with about 13 to 20 named storms possible, 6 to 10 hurricanes, and potentially 3 to 5 major hurricanes. Not expected to be as busy as last season. But as you know, all it takes is one storm to have an impact on the Texas coast. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on that. And boy, was it windy this morning after those storms moved through. I believe we even had some power outages, additional power outages. I'll be back to wrap things up and tell you more about our active weather pattern, which continues into the weekend coming up. Mark and Steph. And speaking of right now, let's take a look at the CPS Energy outage map. That's right. We were looking at about 69 active outages with about a total of 2,030 customers affected right now. And Sarah was saying earlier that it was in the area of the airport and 281 primarily where this is happening. That was the heaviest concentration. Yeah. More than a thousand in that particular area. So again, been an off and on problem all weekend. CPS has been out. Uh, trying their best to get power restored is particularly bad over the long holiday weekend. But again, we're taking a look at this over 2000 folks affected. That number has fluctuated a bit throughout the morning and Transkype. Uh, looking at Loop 410 and FM 78, things are clear there. There was an accident that they were dealing with all morning long at that area. Top stories we're following today. A good deed turned terrifying overnight with a drive by shooting on the east side. San Antonio police say a man was sitting on his porch in the 700 block of Iowa on around 2.30 this morning when he noticed another man walking in the rain. Police say he invited the man to seek shelter under his porch. Soon afterwards, three people drove by firing more than 50 shots at them. One man was shot in the ankle. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Police did not get a description of that vehicle or the suspects, suspects inside. Police are also looking into how another man was shot on San Antonio's north side. This happened just before 1:30 in the 10,300 block of Sahara Drive. That's not far from 281 in San Pedro. Witnesses told police it was an accident. They say a group of people were in front of some apartments messing around with a rifle when it went off, hitting a man in the stomach. He was taken to University Hospital, and the person holding the rifle apparently took off running. Police are still looking for him this morning. Today, for the first time in more than 14 months, in-person jury trials will resume in the Bear County Courthouse. Courthouse has made a lot of changes since the pandemic. For example, jury selection will be done virtually prior to trial. Then jurors will get instructions on when to come down to the courthouse physically. There will also only be one trial happening at a time. That trial is for Jose Baldomero Flores. He's facing two capital murder charges from 2005 and 2011. It's just one of a handful of high profile cases picking back up this year. You can keep up with all of them by subscribing to our new newsletter, Open Court on KSAT.com. In your other morning headlines, new video of the three shooters at that Miami club over the weekend. And we'll show you the dangers for an officer 
on the side of the road. A new street racing ordinance in Kansas City has not slowed the racers down yet. And watching that volcano erupt in Iceland from a whole new angle. Our David Sears is here with those stories and more. Good, good morning, morning, Mr. Sears. This is some incredible video of this volcano. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's good stuff. You'll enjoy it. We'll have it for you in just a second. But first, you're looking at new security cam footage. This is shot from an alley when the driver of this SUV pulls up and these three guys get out. Drawn, gaw, guns drawn, they're ready to start shooting. Now, those are the three who opened fire at folks outside a club early Sunday morning in Miami. Two were killed, 20 wounded. The emotions are running high, especially with relatives. During a press conference yesterday, the father of one of the victims who was killed interrupted the press conference. You all killed my kid. You must burn. You got to burn. That is the pain that affects our community right there, right before you. You can see that uh, security escorted the father away from the press conference, but his pain left an impression. Police have found what they believe is the stolen getaway vehicle. It was pulled out of a canal. There are now $130,000 worth of rewards for information that leads to an arrest of those suspects. All right, let's take you to Illinois. You are in a police squad car on the shoulder of the highway. This is dash cam video car pulling away right there after a traffic stop. Then a warning from dispatch. Uh, black Honda Pilot just got flooded. Ready to Sterling 713, driving stop. Sterling 713, I've just been hit. Black Toyota, black Toyota. Oh. Dealer, please. Unbelievable. Even being warned, just all of a sudden. That SUV shows up and scrapes right by that sergeant's car. The sergeant taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. The 55 year old driver of that uh, SUV also injured, plus now faces several charges, including DUI. All right, you're looking at an intersection of downtown Kansas City. Cars doing donuts, part of their nighttime street racing. A police officer pulls into the center of it all. He gets out of his vehicle. And the cars continue to go around the police car and eventually one almost hits the officer as he's trying to stop the guy right there. And then the guy eventually pulls away, but they came close to hitting some bystanders as well that night. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought they were all going to leave once he pulled in and then um, somebody got brave and started doing circles around him and he almost got hit, which scared me. Yeah, the irony in all this, the city just passed a tougher ordinance against street racing and burnouts. Drivers could get fined up to five grand, spend up to six months in jail, and spectators could owe $100 for just watching the illegal street racing events. Some advocating to find a safe place where street racing can take place, and then police could be on hand to watch and maybe even participate. All right, we're going to end with some awesome video from a drone. We are above the lava flow from the volcano that's erupting in Iceland. The drone operator up the flow and then goes right into the eruption of this volcano. And then all of a sudden the camera kind of goes zip, but you can understand. Check that out. Let me hear from the guy who shot this video. Oh, oh, it flew right into it with yeah. the drone. Yeah, here he is. Now around the volcano where you have the hot gases emitted that cause turbulences all around it and hot rocks raining onto you, flying these things is even more tricky. Hope that wasn't one of the more expensive drugs. <laughs> but isn't that, that's just, that's fascinating. It is fascinating. It's just fascinating. It's something right out of National Geographic. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they, oh. they, they wow. used to shoot them with helicopters, but yeah. you couldn't get all that, that close. close. But I guess the guys will to sacrifice whatever the price of the yeah. drone is to yeah. get some to get some great video but that's the that's drone when drones first came out i was like eh, eh, i'm not sure but now yeah. when you can get video like that and see stuff from just so many different angles absolutely amazing i awesome hear stuff. iceland is a beautiful place to visit oh yeah mm -hmm. saw a uh, piece on a different news program on this volcano mm -hmm. it's like a tourist attraction oh People yeah are coming from all over to just sit so you wear your coat when you get there and you got to take your coat off because the lava flow is so so thick but they got scientists all over this place would love to go see this very love cool. to go see this volcano all awesome. right thank you very much right. david 9 12 about 72 degrees and still ahead an east side teacher returning to her roots to make an impact her story in today's teacher spotlight 
And good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at the San Antonio International Airport, a much different look this weekend than what we saw a year ago. We're gonna break down the numbers and explain what is next for the airport after the break. And stocks right now, the Dow is up about 140 points at 34,671. Welcome back, 916. It has been the talk of the country. Travel, more and more people getting vaccinated and feeling more comfortable enough to travel. And the roads and airports are looking a lot busier than they did this time last year. Oh, you know what? I jumped too far ahead. We're supposed to do weather here. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, Tony I can and Sarah drink and everybody. My coffee and take I, a little break. Yeah, everyone in the booth is like, no. It's the weather. But I'm looking forward to hearing that story because I went to the airport recently and it was busy. And and, and I was busy. just we were just talking about that video out of Iceland. Mm -hmm. Do I, didn't I recall that you went? I did. It yes. was gorgeous. So what was so cool about Iceland? I just think you know it's the land of fire and ice, right? Mm -hmm. So geographically, there's so many different things to see, and I got to hang out with my friend, which was pretty cool. She's from Iceland. Uh, but it's been feeling anything but like Iceland out there. We have been seeing tropical downpours uh, over and over again this past, honestly, two, three weeks. And last night we got some good rain, especially south of Highway 90. Look out toward Del Rio, an inch of rain there, uh, about an inch and three quarters in Eagle Pass. That's good because Eagle Pass is currently experiencing moderate drought. About an inch and a quarter in Pearsall, almost an inch in Pleasanton, an inch in Floresville, and an inch and three quarters in Kennedy. San Antonio International Airport, even though we heard tons of thunder last night, uh, really only got about a quarter of an inch of rainfall over the last 24 hours and a little bit more than that out in Seguin as well. In the next half hour, I'll show a closer look of uh, Bear County and we can uh, talk about some neighborhood uh, rain totals there. Well, we've got some clouds moving in. Briefly, we've been able to see the sun out there. It's 70 degrees, 71 rather, north winds at about 10 miles per hour. And you can see what I mean here, brief sunshine in the and these thin clouds are moving in from the west, uh, but the rain is moving on out of here. In fact, it's really just raining out near Hallettsville and Victoria in our KSAT 12 viewing area, and that is continuing to push to the east as well. Now, because we got a lot of rain last night, or at least we had a lot of convection last night, that's kind of stabilized our atmosphere quite a bit. So I think there's a pretty good chance for us to get a 24 hour break in the widespread rain uh, over the next 24 hours or so. So some good news there for us. 72 in Hondo, 71 in New Braunfels, 73 in Del Rio and 74 in Catula. But notice that I said a 24 hour break in the rain because we are in the middle of an active weather pattern and that active weather pattern is going to keep rain chances in our forecast all the way through the weekend. Here's a look at our weather pattern in the upper levels. We have these squiggles in the upper levels of the atmosphere. They're actually technically called short waves, and that's what provides bursts of energy that allow for us to see thunderstorms. Now these bursts of energy are quite random, and so it's difficult to forecast timing. But what we do know is that our weather pattern is going to be active. Uh, we've got a big upper level low over Baja, California. That's just going to meander and try to push east through the weekend. That's what's going to keep rain chances in the forecast. But as I mentioned, I think we'll have a break in the widespread rain for the next about 24 hours or so, especially here in San Antonio. Today, I do have to include a 20 to 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm, especially during the day as we get some daytime heating here. But as you can see, maybe only one or two rather than a big swath of storms. Earlier, there were indications that there was going to, going to be a pretty big complex developing to our west of thunderstorms in the late evening hours. Now it just looks like there could be one or two storms out to the west. Now, now for these areas, Del Rio, Rock Springs, Lake Eavaldi, some of these storms could be on the stronger side, but watch how this forecasting model kind of just dissipates that rain until we get to the day tomorrow. During the day tomorrow, I do think that we could have scattered showers and storms in the afternoon as we have daytime heating. But for today, I think 85 for the high, mostly cloudy skies, 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm with light and variable winds, a little bit of an uptick in the overnight hours for rain chances, but only to about 30% percent and then Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and especially Saturday, scattered showers and storms are going to be possible. While marginally severe weather is possible, the biggest concern by far is going to be the potential for flooding in just the next 48 hours. So through about Thursday morning, we could see an additional one to two inches of rain around San Antonio, and that's just through 
Thursday morning. Saturday, we have a very good chance to see widespread storms. And by the weekend, we could see a grand total of potentially up to four inches of rain in spots. And that could lead to some pretty big flooding issues because the creeks and rivers are swollen. Not the worst problem to have considering the summer months are ahead. Mark, Steph? That's true. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Can I try this again? Yes. Okay, I think I'm, I think <laughs> I'm on time now. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got it. It's been the talk of the country. Travel. More and more people are getting vaccinated and feeling comfortable enough to travel. And like Sarah was saying, the airports are looking a lot <laughs> busier than they did this time last year. So Max Massey is, in, is at San Antonio International Airport trying to catch some travelers coming in from their long Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. You're right. It does look a lot different now than it did last year. It's still calm and quiet now compared to what we saw earlier. A lot of families out and about this morning and throughout the weekend. Again, much different than the last year that we saw. Joined here with the director of the airport, Jesus Sainz. So what do the numbers look like these past four days? Good morning. Yes, the numbers have been extremely favorable. We're very excited about the uptick in the number of passengers that are now traveling through San Antonio International Airport. We're seeing approximately 120,000 passengers over the five day period for the Memorial Day weekend. And it's been uh, exciting, as I mentioned. So uh, we're asking everyone to continue to, to practice the safe habits, but uh, we're excited to see you here at San Antonio. Now, how does this compare to last year? Yeah, so it's, it's a large increase. When you think back a, a year ago, March, uh, middle of March is when we started the COVID pandemic. And then, uh, you know, April and May uh, and even June, were months that took very, very unfavorable hits for us in the aviation industry. So when we compare ourselves, we like to compare ourselves to 2019 versus 2020. And uh, we're doing extremely well. We're about approximately a little over 80% of where we were in 2019, which is outstanding when we look at where we're heading today. Fantastic, headed in the right direction. And you guys have had two big additions over the last year. You had Breeze and you had JetBlue. So what does that mean for the future of San Antonio travel? Yes, yeah, so th those are two great add-ons to our, our existing carriers that service here, the San Antonio Airport, as it relates to being able to go to additional non-stop destinations. So we have, uh, you know, Breeze that's going to be flying into Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Arkansas, which will be great destinations, a great non-stop service that will go directly from San Antonio to those three locations. And then in October, we'll be launching JetBlue going into LaGuardia and Boston. I know San Antonio City has always longed for a direct flight to Boston, so we'll be launching that service here shortly as well. All right, Jesus, thank you so much, guys. We are far from done. We know Memorial Day is so special around the country, and especially here in Military City, USA. There is a special exhibit still up here at the airport. We're going to show you and explain its significance coming up at 930. Guys, back to you. Great news about Breeze and JetBlue. Thank you, Max Massey, live from San Antonio International Airport. Thanks, Max. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, RJ Marcus has a look at some of the top stories on KSET.com over this holiday weekend. And welcome back. It's about 927 now. Pride Month is officially here and pack your water if you're headed to a popular camping spot this month. Plus the return of a big event to the AT&T Center. RJ Marquez here to tell us about some trending stories on our website. Mm. KSAT.com. Morning, RJ. Morning, guys. Morning. Some interesting news that we have on our website this morning, including that big event coming to AT&T Center, which I believe might be the first sort of big event as the AT&T Center starts to, starts to schedule things and book things. Pretty exciting stuff. But uh, first of all, guys, let's go ahead and start with Pride Month. Of course, June marks a time of celebration and reflection for the LGBTQ plus community and its allies. And here at KSAT, we're hosting a town hall on our website, KSAT.com, tomorrow evening to discuss the LGBTQ plus community in San Antonio and the meaning of Pride Month. Dr. Amy Stone, a professor of sociology and anthropology at Trinity University, and Robert Salcido, the executive director at Pride San Antonio, will be on the panel. They will discuss what it's like to be a member of the LGBTQ plus community in San Antonio and how bills in the Texas legislature could have an impact on community and businesses. So if there's something you'd like to hear discussed, you can submit your questions on our website right now, ksat.com. It's pretty easy. Just go there to the, to the article. You fill out a little question form. It's pretty easy stuff. And tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. on our website, ksat.com. So it should be an interesting discussion there. All right, let's hit the trail. Oh, yeah, this is a big one here. So if you're planning to go hiking, 
at Enchanted Rock or possibly go camping this month, make sure to pack a lot of water. I know it sounds kind of weird because normally people, I would assume, take a lot of water when they go hiking, but park officials say there will be no water available on the grounds until July 1st. So the park posted on Facebook that hikers and campers will need to bring their own water for any use, and that means any use there. Officials at Enchanted Rock are using this month to repair their water storage tank, which was damaged during the winter storm, which means they are going to draw down the water in the park. So porta potties, compositing toilets will still be available for use. I had to look that up. What those are? Not porta potty. I know what that is, but those toilets. <laughs> yeah, biodegradable RJ. stuff. Um, Enchanted Rock in Fredericksburg has nearly 11 miles of hiking trails. A lot of great camping going on there, but uh, make sure to pack that uh, that water bottle or a lot of water in general. Odd yes. timing, because they. I mean, March, April, and May have now passed. Yeah. And we're yeah. getting into kind of the peak camping season before the extreme summer heat. Oh, well. And they just had a record uh, really weekend for Memorial Day. Yes. All their camping sites were packed. So. It's a cool place to visit. It just can get a little packed up there. Yeah. yeah. Take some water. But they're also impacted <laughs> yeah. by the winter storm. Of so. course. Yeah. Right. Yes. All right, guys. Speaking of maybe uh, having to rough it a little bit, we are getting ready for some big time wrestling coming to the AT&T Center in August. WWE announced that Raw is coming back to the Alamo City. The event will be held on August 16th at the AT&T Center and tickets for that go on sale on June 11th. So WWE Raw will feature superstars like Bobby Lashley, Charlotte Flair, and Randy Orton. And I need to go back. I think Charlotte Flair once did a headlock on David Sears. I need to ask him during this break. <laughs> I know he interviewed her. I know, and he said oh, he was I very impressed. That. Yeah, you remember yes, that? Yes, I yeah. do, I do. It's Ric Flair's daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, the event will be the only Texas stop on WWE's touring schedule this summer. Did you say wrestling or wrestling? Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Okay. I like it. We're cool with either one. I was yeah. just making sure. I like saying wrestling, yeah. Okay. It's fun. Wrestling in there, yeah. Good stuff there, the AT&T right. Center. All right, more on KSAT.com. Thanks for the yep. lowdown, RJ. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Tuesday morning, 930 and about 72 degrees. And East Side teacher taking it back to her roots in today's teacher spotlight, how she's making an impact in the healthcare industry and her students next. What does it take to become a certified healthcare professional? Is it the courses, the practicum, the experience, or the title? Students at East Central Independent School District's Cast Lead High School say it takes a village and it starts with a special teacher. Alicia Bedetta visited with one of East Central ISD's finest, Mrs. Whitney Weddle. She shares how she's making an impact in the healthcare industry through her group of students. So remember to follow your thumb line down to your radial pulse. Never in a million years did Mrs. Whitney Waddell ever think she'd come back to East Central High School. And I graduated in 2003. I would put it on top of her and then remove the one from underneath. Much less as a teacher in love with her vocation. So this can be lifted up and you can start, as she turns, start rolling it in. I did emergency medicine for almost 13 years, and then I transitioned into teaching. So I thought, what better way to help than impart my knowledge to our future generation of healthcare providers? So in one basin, you can go ahead and drop soap. The other one will just stay a rinse. Mrs. Waddell is a health doing, science tech teacher at Cass Lead High School. This. So you need to make sure privacy curtain is pulled, but that you're also letting them know what you're about to do. So this is my fourth year teaching. And she's There's the no department blanket, head of no career and technical like education. Good but decision. to her students, to have soil she's their cheerleader, tutor, sure tough that love that type of gal, and inspiration all in one. In my 12 years in school, I've never really had a teacher where really motivates me to learn. And this is something that I actually enjoy. Giselle Vidas is a certified nurse aide and dental assistant and is one of Mrs. Waddell's senior students. She can literally graduate next week on Saturday and walk out and pick what job she wants, <laughs> which I think is amazing. But Vidas, along with other classmates and even district administrators, say the certifications and lessons taught to truly care for those in need are because Mrs. Waddell constantly so leads by example. Them. I need them more than they need me. And if I can make it easy for them to succeed, we all need a little help. Like the time she drove to Midland to be there for a student or buy a laptop and internet for a senior whose family didn't have the necessary funds. I'm supposed to be teaching them compassion and empathy. I'm supposed to show them that like with a little help, we can do great things. That's part of my job. Get everything set up and then move into it like seamlessly. So it's just 
So you already know what you're doing. A job that only a certain type well, of person can do and walk. one that her I students are immensely grateful so for. I asked Mrs. Waddell what makes her go above and beyond. She says she doesn't. This just comes natural for her because for every person who steps into her classroom, they become family and she'll do anything for family and to see them succeed. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Let's go outside with live cam, see how things are looking out there. We're seeing a little bit of sun sneak through after overnight showers and storms. Yeah, that's right, Mark. And you know what? Even when those storms moved through early this morning, between about 5 and 6 o'clock, we had a 47 mile per hour wind gust at the airport. So the morning started off windy and mainly areas south of Highway 90 got a good soaking of rain. Here's a look at rainfall totals. Uh, to about an inch in Floresville, an inch and a quarter in Pearsall, an inch and three quarters out in Eagle Pass, almost two inches of rain in Catula. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a neighborhood view here. You can see that again, areas along and south of Highway 90 got the uh, most amount of rainfall. Palo Alto College area, a little bit more than an inch, half an inch in Adkins, downtown three quarters of an inch. Officially at the airport, almost two quarters, uh, one quarter of an inch of rain over the last 24 hours. Now the aquifer is doing well. It's up three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. We're in year round watering. Unfortunately, with all the rains recently, molds are very high past 12,000. And uh, just taking a look ahead to the forecast, it is Atlantic hurricane season. It begins, so I'll talk about that. And we'll talk about uh, the active weather pattern that keeps rain in the forecast over the next several days. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Over at San Antonio International Airport, a pleasantly busy morning after Memorial Day as people come back from their long holiday weekend. And that's where we find our Max Massey. Now, Max, you mentioned in the last half hour that the airport still has a way to commemorate those fallen military members. That's right. You know, Memorial Day is so special to us around the country and especially here in Military City USA. And that is why this exhibit is still up. As you can see, there is a lot going on here. We are joined with the director of the airport, Jesus Sainz. So, Jesus, why exactly do you guys still have this up? Yeah, it's in partnership with the Audie Murphy Club from Fort Sam Houston. It's something, it's, it's the most simplest form that we, can, we, that we can pay back to have a tribute to those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice as we were all able to celebrate the Memorial Day holiday. Absolutely, they fought for our freedom. Now, continue explaining, you know, each thing on this table symbolizes something special. Yeah, there's so many different references on the table, um, but more importantly, you know, above those references, we want to show that, you know, while they're not here with us, they will never be forgotten. Whether it's, you know, uh, everlasting circle uh, by the dinner, by, by the table, whether that be at breakfast, lunch, or dinner, to say, our remembrance will be everlasting with our comrades that paid that ultimate sacrifice. Whether it's a pinch of salt that, you know, is shed that reminds you of the tears that were shed for the people that we have lost. Or, you know, the, the chair that's empty to show that while they're not here with us, we still love them, we still honor them, we pay tribute to them, and more importantly, they will never be forgotten. Absolutely. All right, Jesus, thank you so much. Now, this is bottom floor. That's why there's not anyone out here. Um, so if people do come to San Antonio, they can see it on their way into the Alamo City. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. Max Massey live at San Antonio International. 940 on your Tuesday morning, about 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. RJ Marcus and Davis Steers are back to break down the latest in sports from the playoff front runners to the chaos in the stands. Hi, welcome back. It's 943. We've had a very noisy overnight, but things have calmed down a little bit. And we've been chatting about it off and on for a couple weeks, but now it's finally here. We're talking about the hurricane season. Yeah, hurricane season. It is June 1st, so the Atlantic hurricane season starts today and it lasts all the way through November 30th, so through the end of November. Now, you'll remember last year we had a very active hurricane season, had to dip into the Greek alphabet because of all the named storms. Now, now, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration does predict about a 60% chance for an above average season this year. However, not as active as last year. About 13 to 20 named storms with 6 to 10 of those being hurricanes and 6 and 3 to 5 of those being major hurricanes or category 3 hurricanes or greater. Of course, we know that no matter if the season is, is very active or not as active, all it takes is one storm in the wrong place to 
to have a big impact to the Texas coast. So we'll continue to keep you updated. We've already seen one of the storms uh, in uh, the Atlantic being named. Subtropical Storm Anna was named. Up next is Bill, and after that will be Claudette. And maybe you'll see your name here on the list for this year. All right, right now outside after storms in the overnight hours, we had a brief moment of sunshine at the airport, and that's why you see the sunny icon there, 71 degrees. But you can see that the clouds are increasing, uh, and you can see that from the satellite image as well. There's a little bit of sun out near Canyon Lake, but these clouds are returning the rain from yesterday in the overnight hours was heaviest south of Highway 90 into Atascosa County and to Wilson County. And even now we're seeing Lavaca County still get a little bit of rain from from that system, but it's pushing off to the east. Now, the good news from that system, in addition to the rain, uh, which we need for the summer months, is that it's stabilized the atmosphere quite a bit. So I think today our rain chances are going to be more isolated than anything. Still a chance for a pop up shower or storm, but we probably won't see any widespread rain until potentially tomorrow. So there's some good news there. 73 in New Braunfels, 72 in Hondo, 72 in Uvalde and 73 in Del Rio. Here's the high res future cast again this afternoon. It's entirely possible to see an isolated shower or storm as you can see there uh, with some heavy downpours possible with any storms that develop uh, even into the afternoon that that's going to be possible as well. And then out uh, into the evening hours, we'll be watching out west where some scattered storms could develop. These could be on the stronger side, but watch as this particular model just kind of dissipates those storms until tomorrow afternoon when we'll have daytime scattered showers and storms. So I think we will get about a 24 hour break here of widespread rain but just a 24 hour break because we're going to have continued active weather pattern through the weekend. So today 20% chance for rain during the day, 85 for the high. It'll be warm and muggy with mostly cloudy skies tonight, about a 30% chance for isolated showers and storms, and their active weather pattern will continue. Showing you the weather pattern right now, we've got a couple of short waves in this upper level weather pattern. Those can create random bursts of energy that fire off showers and storms, and then this upper level low keeps rain chances in the forecast all the way through Saturday especially on Saturday, but even tomorrow afternoon, Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, daytime heating will create some scattered showers and storms with heavy rain possible through the next seven days. So until next Wednesday, uh, we could see potentially four plus inches of rain in, in spots with pockets of even greater than that. The ground is soaked. It really doesn't want any more rain, even though it's good for us to get rain. And because of that, we could have some flooding issues, especially through Saturday day around San Antonio and the Hill Country. We'll keep you updated on KSAT.com and the Weather Authority app as well. All right, we'll watch out for it. Thank you, Sarah. And it was a wild sports weekend, and we're not talking about the final score of the NBA playoff games. It's another bad weekend for fans in the stands. David and RJ back to discuss what's happening and more on big tennis over the weekend. Gentlemen. This is becoming mm, a disturbing yeah. trend bad fans. in the NBA, especially in the NBA right now, because obviously they're in the playoffs and they've allowed some fans back in the stands. But we're, we're seeing some fans that have taken, I don't know, uh, some yeah, some really unacceptable, some words, unacceptable measures here yeah, uh, when it comes to dealing with some of the players. So this was one of the incidents over the weekend. Kyrie Irving, of course, made his return to Boston, um, had a fan throw a water bottle at him, nearly hit him as he was walking off the court. That fan arrested, banned. And this is really what I don't understand why these fans are doing this because they're getting banned, lifetime bans yeah. from these arenas. Here's another one, David. Yeah, this guy uh, decided he wanted to go out and be a part of the game. And the Wizards so game. <laughs> he, this was a fan of the Wizards game last night, so they had to, uh, you know, handcuff him and haul him off. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, earlier it, it, it started with popcorn thrown on Russell Westbrook when he was leaving. And mm -hmm. I think in New York, some of the fans were spitting on Trey Young when he was walking off the floor. Yeah. Jay, uh, ja Morant's family was in the stands in Utah, and they started getting yeah. uh, just verbally abused. In the yeah, stands, and we, you can imagine what some of the uh, things that were being said to his family. Wh what's all, going on, guys? Yeah, Here's thinking, the incident with the, the popcorn Westbrook. Yeah, yeah, I, so we got, I don't know if fans are just kind of uh, just getting a little stir crazy. Haven't been to any games throughout <laughs> this whole year. But at the same time, I, I don't know 
why they feel the need to act this way. This was at New York. I, it wasn't these fans, but still it was this incident in which Trey Young were a fan allegedly spit at him. So oh I, gosh. yeah, just, I don't understand this. Uh, yeah, yeah, they've been cooped up and now they get the opportunity to go and, and cheer and this is what some do. The problem we're going to, we're going to have here is, is these, I, I don't want to call them idiots, but these, these few <laughs> fans that go out <laughs> and do these <laughs> stupid things. I don't want to say it's stupid, but these fans that go out and do these stupid things are going to, are going to cost other fans. Yeah. Right. Because you know, they're going to have to start, security is going to have to be beefed up. Right. They're going to have to start doing more security measures, mm -hmm. more check, more this, more that. Or they're going to go back gonna, to their bubble. You know, it's going <laughs> to take away safe. some of the fun. Yeah. And it's yeah. not just NBA. We just saw it at, at, at an Astros game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. You can, yeah. That, yeah. Those fans. Those yeah. Fans, yeah. fans fighting in the stands yeah. also there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely just, just acting unruly. So. And uh, as we said, now fans are getting back, but just going to make things worse for everybody else. And I remember last year, there was a fan who threw a water bottle also at a Spurs game in Boston that did not, that actually fell like over yeah. their bench. So I, I don't understand why they do it. Again, lifetime bans for all these fans. It just makes no sense. Why would you pay that money and then just... Do something you else. remember back in the 90s, a lot of Spur fans remember the guy that used to sit behind the stands for the Washington, there were the, then the Washington Bullets and just heckled the heck out of the visiting team. That was when it was good and it was a whole, the guy was really funny. He had some of the players sitting on the bench just laughing because he would throw out some, some really funny stuff. And but he just, kept it clean. Yeah. Yeah. But, and you just, I mean, he was like, if they're paying attention to me, then they're not paying attention yeah. to what's going on there in the court. Go. And he, he was funny. He was yeah. pretty much clean. I mean, he, and the only reason he stopped doing it is because they went to a different arena. And, and, and we've uh, seen the Spurs the fans, tickets, so. uh, the baseline bums, yeah. we've sat in front of them. They're pretty lighthearted about stuff. They cheer, boo, but they don't ever really go to these extents. So. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, hopefully they can get it under control at least before the finals get here and the playoffs continue. And then next year when when uh, a lot of more fans are going to be wanting to get in the uh, in the stands and, uh, you know, they got to get a hold of this. Yeah, got to get rid sure. of this. Yeah, I guess they forgot how to behave in public after <laughs> the pandemic. Pretty much, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Social I think media probably. We were going to talk about Noma Osaka withdrawing from the, well, from the Open, but mm -hmm. I think we're out of time, unfortunately. Tomorrow. We can talk, talk about, about it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, okay. deal. Big news there. That's, That's the story. will still be alive tomorrow. <laughs> deal. Thank you, RJ. Right. David, thank Thanks, you, guys. guys. 951 on your Tuesday morning. And we'll be right back. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, Kathleen Turner from the Kaminsky Method. Plus, we'll learn some summer skincare tips. We'll see you soon right here on live. Well, we wrap up this 9 a.m. newscast with a sweet success for the folks over at Krispy Kreme Donuts. That's right. The Krispy Kreme has given away over 1.5 million donuts to vaccinated Americans. Yeah, Krispy Kreme announced that it has shown it, that its sweet support to those doing their part to protect themselves and others by giving free donuts to, as you said, 1.5 million Americans who have presented a ballot vaccination card at participating locations. So vaccinated donut lovers can continue getting a free original glazed donut every single day through the end of 2021. You heard that right, folks. Every <laughs> awesome. single yeah. day. And the company's doubling down for National Donut Day. That's right. So on Friday, June 4th, all customers can get one donut of their choice for free. No purchase necessary. But all Americans who have received at least one vaccination shot can receive two free donuts instead of just one. So they're combining the two offers. On uh, National Donut Day, stop by. Enjoy any donut you want on us. And if you're helping us get past this pandemic by getting your vaccine, then thank you. And have a second donut on us, cool. according to Chief Marketing Officer Dave Skeena in a statement. As a kid, I used to love watching the waterfall of glaze. I know. The best <laughs> part they add on the COVID card, it's from Jane, Jane Doe, D-O-U-G-H. That's pretty cute. <laughs> have a great day, guys.